To native and WNBA star Brittany Griner has been detained in Russia for nearly two months now after being taken into custody at the airport. Now with a May 19th court appearance looming, a lot of folks are wondering what's going to happen next. And joining us to talk about it this morning is Aaron Solomon, chief legal analyst for Esquire Digital. Aaron, good morning. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. So the, the Biden administration, I understand, is going to work to secure Brittany Griner's release. The, the, the legal case against her is playing out. Does the White House support uh, the, the, the changing things? Does this the support from the White House help to change things for Griner's legal team? I really don't think it does. I mean, this isn't a legal case at this point. We all have to remember that, unlike the United States, Russia doesn't have rule of law. Brittany Griner has been a political detainee from day one, and only this week, when the U.S. government said that she's been, quote unquote, wrongfully detained, do we really understand the nature of this case? And by the way, I don't think there's any way there's going to be a hearing on May 19th. Okay. Uh, is this a prisoner swap, Aaron, of Trevor Reed, uh, a Fort Worth native? a positive sign for Brittany Griner's own release. What do you think about that? I don't think it's positive or negative. I mean, it's positive to show that even though Russia has invaded Ukraine, that the U.S. and Russia are still working diplomatic back channels to discuss things like prisoner swaps. And that's exactly what this is going to take. So while it's a positive sign that Reid has been released, let's remember that Paul Whelan has been in custody in Russia since 2018, and there's been no swap for him yet. Really, in basketball terms, it's going to be both sides coming up with a fair trade. And they obviously don't have that yet. So you really do have to take each one of these situations individually. I mean, do we call this a kidnapping? I mean, is that too much of a stretch? What do we, how do we even describe this arrest? I, I seem like I want to put it in quotes, you know? The strange thing this week is that Bill Richardson, the former governor of New Mexico and ambassador to the United Nations, was brought into the case to help negotiate. Now, he is trained as a hostage negotiator, yet the American government is still not calling this a hostage situation. Then why would you need a hostage negotiator? Brittany Griner is a political prisoner at this point. She's being illegally and wrongfully detained by Russia, and she's going to remain there until there is a good trade with the United States. That's, that's where we are. Anything else just isn't reality. Aaron, do you think the U.S. government has any realistic recourse here? No, none. The U.S. government has no leverage at all over Russia at this point. I'm sure that part of what Russia has tried with Brittany Griner is a relaxation of economic sanctions, and the United States isn't willing to do that in exchange for Brittany Griner. I always love to think of the possibility here if this was Kyrie Irving instead of Brittany Griner, mm -hmm. how the treatment might have been different. I think that's something for our viewers to think about. Uh, what do you think about that? I mean, does the name recognition uh, or how does the name recognition play in all of this? Well, it's not only the name recognition. I mean, let's be honest. Brittany Griner is one of the greatest women to ever play basketball. But the fact that she's black, the fact that she's queer, the fact that she's covered in tattoos doesn't put her in the same place in the hearts of many Americans as people like Kyrie Irving and Kevin Garnett are. I think if they were the people who were being taken political prisoner, that they'd be on the front page of every paper every day. Interesting. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Aaron, uh, do you think the timing of her arrest, her detention in Russia, plays at all to what's going on with Ukraine. 100%. I'm sure that when Russia was getting ready to invade Ukraine, they looked in, in, at the country and said, who is the highest profile American athlete mm -hmm. that we have? Russia's top sports league is the KHL, Continental Hockey League, but there are no Americans who play in that league who have the stature of Brittany Griner. So she was returning from overseas into Russia and they grabbed her at the airport. So bad luck, bad timing, I guess, is in that case. And the thing is, you know, the idea that she was doing something illegal should make no sense to the viewers at all. She's played for seven years in Russia, and many WNBA stars play in Russia and Turkey and China, and they're very well informed by their teams and the U.S. government that the laws of the land are there. So don't do anything that's illegal. I'm sure she wouldn't have. Yeah. Well, we continue to follow this. Uh, of course, Aaron Solomon, Chief Legal Analyst for Esquire Digital. Thank you so much for your insight this morning. We appreciate it.